Last week, there was some big news in the world of obesity treatment, and I've been busy, so I'm playing catch up a little bit. Eli Lilly just dropped major phase three data on a next generation drug that blew past expectations, but it comes with a twist. Today, we're breaking down what this means for patients, the obesity drug market, and the future of weight loss medicine. I'm RMZ. Now, let's dive in. First, what exactly am I talking about? The drug at the center of all the headlines is Ritatatride, an experimental once-weekly injectable developed by Eli Lilly. It's not just your standard GLP-1 like many current weight loss drugs. It is a triple hormone agonist activating the GLP-1, the GIP, and glucagon receptors. This three-pronged approach is designed to supercharge weight loss far beyond what we're used to. In the phase three Triumph 4 trial, Tatotite shattered expectations. Here's the breakdown. After 68 weeks, patients on the higher 12 milligram dose lost about 28.7% of their body weight. That's roughly 71 pounds on average. Those on the nine milligram dose showed nearly 26.4% average weight loss. And unlike many trials, there was also a huge drop around 75% in knee osteoarthritis pain for participants battling obesity and joint issues. These numbers far surpass what analysts predicted, making this one of the most powerful results ever seen from an obesity drug trial. However, it's not all sunshine and victory laps. The trial also saw a higher than expected discontinuation rate, meaning people dropped out because of side effects or intolerance. About 18.2% of patients on the highest dose stopped treatment due to adverse events compared to just 4% on placebo. Side effects range from typical GI symptoms to unusual sensations on skin like dysesthesia. Though most were mild, they still led to people stopping treatment. Some participants even discontinued because of perceived excessive weight loss, which is a unique and unexpected challenge with such dramatic efficacy. Now, what does this mean? for Eli Lilly and the obesity treatment landscape. For Lilly, this reinforces its leadership in the space, even head of its own blockbusters like Zetbound and Manjaro. Shares reacted positively, modest gains, but the real story is expectations versus tolerability balance. Also noteworthy, Lilly is running multiple phase three trials across obesity, type two diabetes, sleep apnea, and additional conditions with more results due in 2026. If we're to try our drugs like it, make it to market, we could be looking at a new era of obesity care, not just incremental improvements, but dramatic changes in weight management outcomes. That's more weight loss, relief from obesity related health issues, broader metabolic impact, but there's also a catch, tolerability and side effects need to be manageable for this truly to become mainstream. What do you think? Does a drug this powerful justify the risk of side effects or is the future of obesity treatment still uncertain? Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into a major new health study about one of the most talked about weight loss drugs, Manjaro or Zetbound, and specifically what happens when people stop using it. You've probably heard that this medication can help people lose serious weight, but new research shows that when people stop taking it, not only do they regain the weight, which we already knew, other health benefits can also reverse. Let's break down what this really means. First, a quick refresher. Manjaro is the brand name for tizepatide. It's also shown as Zepbound for weight loss. It's a once weekly injection originally developed for type two diabetes. It works by mimicking two gut hormones, GLP-1 and GIP, which slow digestion, reduce appetite and boost weight loss and blood sugar control. This medication can lead to 20 to 30% reduction in body weight during treatment. It improves blood sugar regulation. It can also improve blood pressure and cholesterol. This is over weeks and months on, of treatment. The key study we're talking about is called SIRMount4, a clinical trial looking not just at weight loss during treatment, but what happens after people stop taking the medication. During this treatment for weeks zero to 36, participants took terzepatide with diet and exercise support. And then for weeks 36 to 88, half stayed on terzepatide and half switched to placebo, which is no active drug. Researchers tracked weight and health markers through week 88. When participants stopped taking terzepatide after 36 weeks, a large majority regained weight. In fact, 82% regained at least 25% of the weight that they had lost. 
some regained 50% or more, and about a quarter of the people saw a regain of 75% or more. That means for most people, the weight doesn't just drift back slowly, it returns significantly within a year. But here's the really important part. It's not just weight that comes back. Other health improvements are also reversed. Waist circumference increases, blood pressure rises, LDL or bad cholesterol increases, blood sugar and A1C go up. And for people who regain 75% or more of their weight, these measures basically return to baseline, undoing many of the earlier benefits. So why does this all happen? Why does stopping the drug almost immediately reverse its effects? The drug's effects on appetite and metabolism depend on being in your system. Once you stop, hormones that drive hunger, digestion speed, and fat storage return to their previous patterns. You may feel hungrier and your metabolism can shift back to where it was before treatment. It's similar to many chronic conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes where stopping medication often means the return of those conditions. Now, experts emphasize this isn't about the drug failing, it's about understanding obesity as a chronic long-term condition. Excess weight drives cardiometabolic issues. When weight returns, so do risk factors, says a University of Glasgow expert. And other research shows that stopping GOP-1 or dual action drugs often lead to weight regain faster than stopping traditional dieting or lifestyle changes. So if you or someone you know are planning on stopping these GOP-1 medications, what's the takeaway? You need to talk to your doctor before stopping. You need to set up a plan with nutrition and activity support. You need to understand appetite metabolism will likely shift and you need continued support and that's medical and lifestyle. That's the key. Stopping the drug doesn't erase the fact that it helped, but to keep healthy results, you need a long-term strategy. Researchers also hope future innovations, including more sustainable treatments and behavioral strategies, will give people better ways to maintain weight loss for the long haul. Right now though, the science points to this, weight loss while on treatment can be significant, but many of those benefits fade once the drug stops.